So you've been following keto and your results in the beginning were amazing, but something happened weeks and months in, the results came to a screeching halt. You hit a keto plateau, it happens. In this video, I'm gonna share with you five solutions to your keto stall so you can ramp up your results and feel amazing. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of Keto Flex and the founder of Keto Camp. I have taken tens of thousands of students through different keto protocols. And something that I learned is that a keto plateau or weight loss stall, whatever you wanna call it, is almost guaranteed. And what I've done with these students are these five different changes, tips if you will, that I'm gonna share with you today. And I gotta say, they work like a charm. The fifth tip is probably the most important one here and then I'm gonna throw in a bonus tip but I promise you this, if you take action on just one of these five tips, you'll get results. You take action on five of them, you'll get amazing results. Let's first categorize and classify what exactly a keto plateau is. Chances are you're probably determining that by looking at the scale, the weight scale. And I'm here to tell you that although I want you to get to your goal weight, the scale is a damn liar. There are so many different reasons why the number is going to fluctuate on that scale. I remember back in 2008 when I was obese, physically and mentally, every day I stepped on that scale and it was discouraging. And I have soon realized that the number on the scale is the least important metric to track. Allow me to explain. Your weight is going to fluctuate for several reasons. If you're a woman watching this right now or listening and you have a menstrual cycle, Guess what? The week of your period, you actually retain more water and it shows up on the scale. Or if you exercise and work out and you're sore, you actually retain more water and it shows up on the scale. Perfect example is this. Three days ago, I weighed myself. I weighed 183 pounds. And then I worked out three days in a row, strength training workouts. And on the fourth day, I was super sore and I stepped on that scale and my weight went up to 192 pounds. Did I gain nine pounds of fat? by exercising and eating clean? No, that's just what happens when you're sore. There are so many reasons why the weight goes up and down. I say all that because although you'll get to your goal weight, I promise you if you follow these tips, we wanna pay attention to non-scale victories. How your clothes fit, your body fat percentage, I would argue that is way more important than the total number on the scale. If you don't have a body fat machine, I have the one from InBody right here. That could be a good thing to track on a continuous basis. We have a coupon code and a link with them. I'll reference that down below. But take some photos of yourself, take some measurements, pay attention to that. But let's say you're doing all that and you just, the results have slowed down. You used to feel really good on keto, now nah, you don't feel as good. That's where these five solutions come into play because it is all about hormones. Hormones are chemical messengers inside of your body. Your body is this amazing orchestra and we have fat burning hormones. We have hormones that help your cells produce energy, longevity hormones. There's over 600 in the body. So these five tips are all designed to help your hormones and your cells communicate better. I'm not gonna tell you to just cut your calories or check your calories and eat less and move more. That's a whole bunch of BS. If anybody's teaching you to count calories, red flag, red flag, huge red flags run away. That's old school dogma. I used to think the same way. But calories, yeah, they matter and they're not important. Here is what is important. Let's get into the first solution here. First solution is fundamentals. Your house could only be as strong as the foundation it's built on. Let's say you're building a house and you're using all of your resources on the fancy kitchen, the fancy bedrooms, the fancy rooftop. But that foundation, you forgot about that foundation. What's going to happen? That house is going to fall apart wall by wall. Same thing with your body, your house of health. If that foundation is not strong, I don't care how much keto you do, how much fasting you do, how many supplements you take, your health is gonna fall apart wall by wall. So if you haven't done this, revisit the fundamentals of health. And there are two specific fundamentals we're gonna focus on. Number one is sleep, and number two is stress. Let's talk about sleep first. If your goal is to burn fat and lose some weight, then you wanna make sure you're getting enough deep delta sleep. That's when actually most of your fat burning hormones are activated, not at the gym, not when you're running and sprinting and playing basketball or, or strength training, when you sleep and recover, specifically 
deep delta sleep. Your body's ramping up fat burning. If you're not tracking your delta sleep and you're not getting enough delta sleep, it's gonna be very hard to get the results that you are aiming for. So you could track your delta sleep and your REM sleep and your different metrics for sleep heart rate variability with like an aura ring or a whoop watch, an apple watch, there's different metrics out there. I'm not promoting any specific one, although I do have an aura ring, I'm not affiliated with them, but you wanna to aim to get two hours of deep sleep every night. When you do that, you're going to see more ketones, lowering your glucose, less inflammation, and the weight starts to come off. How do you get more deep sleep? I'm so glad you asked the question. The goal is to keep your bedroom cold. The research suggests that in order for your body to get deep restorative fat burning sleep, your core body temperature needs to decrease and drop and a cold bedroom will help you achieve this. The studies show 65 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit is where you want to set that thermostat. I actually set mine to 63 and I live in Miami. And I have something called a chili pad that cools my bed as well. So cold bedroom number one, and then dark bedroom number two. You could either invest in blackout curtains or you could wear a blackout mask, but make sure you're turning off the television, your phone's out of the bedroom, there's not artificial light because that's gonna bump up cortisol and decrease melatonin, not good for deep restorative sleep. And then have some sort of sleep routine, some sleep hygiene routine where your body, your circadian rhythm knows you're getting ready for bed. We want to stay away from things that are going to excite you and stimulate you at night. So turn off the news, turn off scary movies, read a book, get into a habit, a routine, a nighttime hygiene routine that's going to signal to your body to get better sleep. And of course, you could take supplements like magnesium glycinate, 400 to 600 milligrams that should help with your sleep as well. And there's other things you can do like banana tea. Uh, banana tea is a simple tip. It is keto friendly because you're not necessarily eating the banana. What you're doing is grabbing a whole organic banana, leaving the peel on, and you're going to just cut the ends off of that banana and then put that banana with the peel on in a pot of water, let it boil until the peel starts to brown. After you see that happen, you're gonna pour the water into a cup, the banana tea, and then put the banana in the freezer drink the banana tea, it's like nature's NyQuil. Uh, I learned this from Dr. Michael Bruce, America's sleep doctor, has more magnesium, potassium, and micronutrients than the actual banana itself, and all of that seeps into the water. So that's a great way to get better sleep. So sleep needs to be a priority. If you're not getting quality sleep, the research is clear. You're going to have higher levels of cortisol the next morning. Cortisol causes you to store fat, by the way. And when cortisol goes up, glucose follows, and guess what drops? Ketones. That's probably why you don't feel so good on keto and you hit a plateau. So sleep is the main focus. This goes hand in hand with stress. Stress is very important to master. I never say manage stress to my students. I tell them to master stress. If your cortisol is chronically elevated, that's a fast way to lower your metabolism, to lower your immune system, and to feel really crappy and crummy on keto. So when we think about stress, stress is bad for you when you don't adapt. That's what I'm talking about here. Chronic stress where your body's not adapting to it. And when you have high levels of cortisol, you store belly fat and love handle fat. That's called cortisol belly. If you got a lot of fat around that belly and love handles, and that's what you're having trouble burning for energy, it is a cortisol issue, a cortisol belly. Here's the solution. There's a supplement that you can take that is anti-inflammatory. It is fat burning. It also helps with brain health, the immune system, happiness. It is like a miracle drug if you want to call it that. It's not a drug though, although it acts like one. Actually, there's no drugs out there that perform as strong as this one. Dr. Joe Dispenza has done brain scans on individuals going through his course and he saw when they took this vitamin called vitamin G, 1,200 different chemical reactions take place instantaneously to put the body and the brain in this anti-inflammatory state. Oxytocin was produced, dopamine, GABA, serotonin, instantly after they took vitamin G. You probably have guessed it now by looking at my t-shirt that vitamin G is the practice of gratitude. What you appreciate, appreciates. This is a universal law. And when you are in the daily habit of practicing and feeling gratitude, 
that is the best way to overcome mental stress and to put your body in this anti-inflammatory fat burning state. So get your vitamin G every single day throughout the day and watch what it does to help you overcome this keto plateau. On the same topic of stress, it's important to also design a life that is congruent with your highest values. And I know this is kind of going off topic here because you're here to learn about a keto plateau, but I, I'm going to make the case that this is right on topic. When you are living on purpose with your purpose, it is so anti-inflammatory. It is one of the best biohacks. It is one of the best anti-aging hacks out there. There was a study that came out in the late 1980s and it came from a book called Recovering the Soul by Dr. Larry Dossey, medical doctor. And I would guess that, that same, the same stats that I'm just gonna share with you from this book would be relevant today. And it showed that most people have their first heart attack in the United States Monday morning between 8 and 9 a.m. Going to jobs they hate, the stress of driving to a job they hate created a heart attack 85% of the time. When these individuals had their first heart attack, it was Monday morning. So live on purpose with your purpose and be really mindful of your thoughts because you have 60,000 thoughts per day. That is right, 60,000. That's what they determine. They have done studies on this, psychiatrists have, and they have determined that out of those 60,000 thoughts, 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts from yesterday, and 85% of those thoughts are negative thoughts. Zig Ziglar called it stinking thinking. And I'm here to tell you this, keto camper, if your thinking is stinking, your dreams are shrinking. And if your thoughts have the ability to communicate with your DNA, they do, by the way, Dr. Bruce Lipton has proven that, when you have a positive thought, it tells your DNA nucleus to perform and produce anti-inflammatory proteins. But when it's a negative thought, a stinking thinking thought, a hateful thought, it tells your DNA to produce inflammatory proteins. So if you have 60,000 thoughts per day, you have 60,000 opportunities to put your body in an anti-inflammatory healing state. You become what you think about most of the time. Bob Proctor said, thoughts become things. If you could see it in your mind, you could hold it in your hand. I spent a lot of time on tip number one here because I believe it's the most important. Let's move on to tip number two. Tip number two is to create adaptation. Here's what I want you to write down in your notes. Actually, even better than that, comment down below with this because I wanna make sure we're on the same page. The number one priority for the human body is survival. Seriously, stop right now and comment down below with that so I know we're on the same page. The number one priority for the human body is survival. When you force adaptation, the body wants to survive. So good cells, they get stronger. Bad cells, they don't adapt. And that goes for mitochondria. Mitochondria are very important for your body's ability to produce energy, to burn fat, and to feel damn good. And when you force a stress and force a change and adaptation, the good my mitochondria go through mitogenesis and mitofitness, and the bad mitochondria go through mitophagy. And what do I mean by adaptation? What do all great personal trainers and fitness coaches understand? Uh, for example, if you're not following GC3 Fitness, Giancarlo Anzalotti on YouTube, he is really amazing at teaching fitness. And he understands this because he's an elite fitness coach and all elite fitness coaches understand this one principle. Keep the body guessing, keep the body adapting. When the client comes in, the workout routine is always different. They never get comfortable. It keeps the body, the muscle confused, which forces change every time. Why? Because it helps the body adapt and it prevents a plateau, it prevents a stall. If you went to the gym starting today and you did curls and you're going to get a result, it's the first time you did it in some time, but if you do that every single day, what happens after a couple weeks? You stop getting the same results and arguably you're losing some results. So change things up like a great personal trainer does for their client. How can you implement this? Well, if you're doing keto, and you're in the habit of eating the same keto foods every day, that actually can potentially lower diversity in your gut, not good, 
So mix it up with different keto foods. Instead of the handful of five foods you're eating every day, go to five different keto foods or 10 different keto foods. Change your foods. That creates a stressor to your gut, which actually can create more diversity in your gut. If you're not practicing intermittent fasting yet with your keto protocol, add in intermittent fasting. That's a great way to stress the mitochondria and create a change. Or if you are practicing intermittent fasting, change your schedule. Instead of doing a 16-8 every day, do a 24. Do a 24-hour fast, do a 36-hour fast, or if you're doing a lot of fasting, hey, do less fasting. I think you get the point. Change things up. Keep the body guessing. Adaptation is the name of the game. Adapt or die, baby. That's the motto of the innate intelligence. The third tip is to remove these keto-friendly foods that, yeah, they're, they might be keto-friendly, but they're probably not health-friendly, and they're probably causing you more harm than they are helping you. And that's gonna be number one, cow dairy. Pasteurized cow dairy. This study shows that 75% of the population in the world cannot process cow dairy efficiently, meaning it's creating some kind of inflammatory response. So we wanna swap that out for sheep and goat dairy. That is much, much better. Also, these keto foods can be inflammatory for a lot of people, specifically the ones that are higher in oxalates like spinach, almonds, and kale. I know, I'm killing you here because you're probably eating a ton of keto foods with spinach, almonds, and kale. Those are loaded with oxalates. Oxalates are these tiny little needles, anti-nutrients found in these foods that actually can create inflammation in your gut and cause a keto plateau and, and probably be the number one reason why you don't feel well on keto. So maybe for 30 days, you remove those. Instead of almonds, switch those to macadamia nuts or peely nuts or walnuts or pecans. I like those nutritional profiles much better than almonds. And instead of spinach and kale, uh, arugula would be a better swap for you as well. And there's a liver benefit to eating arugula as well. You also wanna be cognizant of nightshades like eggplants and potatoes, you're probably not having potatoes on keto. So eggplants and tomatoes and green peppers might also be inflammatory for some people, although they're keto friendly. You might want to remove them for a short period of time and see your body adapts. And then artificial sweeteners. A lot We know that a lot of keto products are notoriously loaded with artificial sweeteners. You want to make sure you're avoiding sucralose and aspartame for sure. But if you are having stevia and monk fruit or erythritol or xylitol, those are healthier options, I would agree. I would say, hey, maybe for a week or two weeks, you remove all of them, including stevia, including monk fruit, and just see what happens with your body. That might make a difference for you as well. And then the one that we gotta really mention here is the most inflammatory keto food in the world, although it's not really a food in my book, it is a Franken food, and that's gonna be vegetable oils. Uh, they are everywhere, <laughs> they're in a lot of keto foods, they're at Whole Foods supermarket, they're very inflammatory. And if you're having vegetable oils, that's probably the number one reason why you're watching this video because you hit a plateau. There are three C's, three S's, and two others. So write these down. We have canola, cottonseed, and corn oil. Then we have soybean, sunflower, and safflower oil. And then we have rice bran oil and grape seed oil. Get rid of them. Swap those polyunsaturated fatty acids that are highly inflammatory. Swap them for saturated fats, and monounsaturated fats, such as grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, beef tallow, real olive oil, that's not cut, real avocado oil, that's not cut, duck fat, even non-hydrogenated lard. Those are going to be much better. And I'm gonna throw in one more thing here, fish oil. If you're taking fish oil, that to me is a rancid inflammatory fat, can also be contributing to why you don't feel well on keto and why you hit a plateau. So I would remove the fish oil. And I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel all about the problem with fish oil. I don't have time to get into that today, but I don't take it, I don't recommend it to any of my students. So with the vegetable oils, it's very hard to avoid the hateful eight. When you go to restaurants, uh, chances are they're gonna cook with them. So I have put together something for you. It's a free gift called my vegetable oil allergy card. And I simply show this to the server 
and they pay attention. They make sure they do not cook with those inflammatory fats. And on this card, it shows the healthier options. So you could get this for free if you go to seedoilcard.com. You'll be sent a PDF download and then save that image on your phone and show that to your server. And that's how you avoid the vegetable oils at restaurants. We got two more tips and a bonus tip. If you're getting any value so far, please consider hitting the thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you're notified when I release a brand new video. The fourth tip here is going to be carnivore. If you've never done carnivore, it might be a good idea for you to add in carnivore when you hit a plateau. The way I have this set up in my Keto Camp Academy is the third month of keto, we actually transition into carnivore. If you're not familiar with the carnivore diet, it's an all meat diet. Well, that's one variation of it. There's four different levels to carnivore. I'm gonna teach you all four levels right now, but let me explain why I believe carnivore could be a great option for you short term. We mentioned oxalates earlier about plant toxins and nightshades and all that. There are hundreds and hundreds of different anti-nutrients in plants. Plants have developed these defense mechanisms over years and years and years because when a predator would eat a plant, a vegetable, the predator would get sick from these plant toxins and the predator would say, oh, I'm not eating those plants again. So it helped the survival for these plants. They had to do that. They're not like animals where they could run away or fight for themselves. This is their ability to defend for themselves. They created defense chemicals, plant toxins. Every vegetable has them. From Brussels sprouts to broccoli to spinach and kale and nuts and seeds, etc. We have been eating them in excess and here's the problem. If you don't have a healthy digestive tract, most people don't, they have a leaky gut. Those plant toxins actually poke holes in the gut, creating more inflammation and leading to you not feeling well, which is probably why you're watching the video. So with carnivore, carnivore is one of the best elimination diets out there because with meat, there are no anti-nutrients and it heals the gut, lowers inflammation. I've done experiments on a carnivore that I've posted videos on my YouTube channel. I feel amazing. I lose body fat. My skin complexion improves. My digestive system improves. My brain feels better. I feel incredible. And I do it 30, 40 days from time to time. So I would encourage you to do it for the next 30 to 40 days as well. There are four different levels to carnivore. And I wrote an entire chapter all about carnivore in my book, Keto Flex. And you could get this over at ketoflexbook.com. But here are the four levels. Level one is probably the most extreme one out of all the four levels, actually it is, not probably, but it's more suited for somebody who has like severe autoimmune disease and leaky gut. And level one is just beef and salt, red meat and salt, that's it. 30 to 40 days, that can make a big difference for you. I know it sounds pretty bland and basic, but oh my gosh, like the benefits of that will far outweigh the boredom of just beef and salt. Level two, you have a little bit more flexibility. It's beef and salt plus any animal products. So you could throw in poultry like chicken and turkey. You can throw in bison, you can throw in lamb and red meat. So all animal flesh goes for level two. Level two is everything I mentioned in level one and two, plus now you could incorporate dairy and eggs. I would recommend if you're gonna do level three, the dairy come from sheep and goat dairy, not cow dairy. Level four is the most flexible out there. And that's gonna include everything we just mentioned, levels one through three, plus some plant-based sauces like primal kitchen sauces, some seasoning and spices, and also avocados and mushrooms in low amounts can be allowed in a level four. I don't know which level is better for you. You can mix and match and do one level a week, but I do know this. If you do carnivore for the next 30 or 40 days, I want you to report back and let me know how it worked out for you because I know it'll make a big difference for you. So come back to this video after you've done it and let me know how it worked for you. The fifth tip is probably the most controversial one, but it's very important. You know that I love keto. I think keto is not a diet, but a, an incredible metabolic process. It is anti-inflammatory. It is so healing. It is my favorite tool in the shed. Heck, I wrote books about keto. I've been teaching this stuff for 10 plus years. My company is called Keto Camp, but here's the controversial part. And not all keto educators and 
our space agree with me here, but keto should not be long-term. We should not be in ketosis long-term. Hear me out, and I'm gonna give you a protocol here. All of our ancestors, they did keto. Facts. They fasted, they had famine, they had to have the ability to burn body fat and get ketones to the brain. Otherwise, we wouldn't exist today, so thank God for ketones. Nothing new about keto, it's just nuanced. But when our ancestors had the opportunity to eat carbohydrates, they did. The goal is not keto for life, the goal is metabolic flexibility. And here's how this relates to your stall on keto. If you have been in ketosis for too long, what is too long? I'm gonna classify that as six months in a row or longer. This might be happening to you. And in my book, Keto Flex, I go into the four main reasons why we don't wanna do keto long-term, but I'm gonna talk about one of those reasons right now, and that is fat loss actually slows down. Here's why. We mentioned earlier in the video, the number one priority for the human body is, that's correct, survival. So if you've only given your body fat for fuel for six months, one year, two years, your innate intelligence, your metabolism, thinks fat for fuel. It's the only fuel, fat for fuel. In short term, amazing. Long term, here's the problem. Here's the analogy. Let's say you live in Alaska and it is the summertime and you live in a little cabin in the middle of the woods in Alaska. And you know, in a few months, it's gonna be fall and winter and it's gonna be freezing cold. So you are very smart and you're getting prepared for the cold winter months because you're thinking about survival. So you start storing firewood to get ready for the months of cold winter uh, up ahead. And what happens? November, December rolls around, but you've only saved up about 20 logs of firewood. What are you gonna do? You have about five months of freezing cold temperatures, but you just have 20 logs of firewood to get through. You're gonna burn that firewood as slowly as possible, all for the sake of survival. You're gonna to want to preserve your precious fuel supply. This is exactly what's happening with long-term ketosis. You are, your innate intelligence is trying to preserve its precious fuel supply, your body fat, and it does this in different ways. It actually can send water into your fat cells and create dimply fat, or it can blunt the receptor sites for insulin and create a different insulin resistant process that's different than the one of a type two diabetic. But here's the solution. Let's say your buddy comes over and says, oh, Henry, you only have 20 logs of firewood? No worries, buddy. I have thousands of firewood. I'm gonna drop 200 logs for you. So now you have 220 logs of firewood. What are you gonna do? You're gonna ramp up the burning. You're gonna be more motivated to burn the firewood. That's what a keto flex day does to your metabolism. It reminds the metabolism it's not starving, let's ramp up fat burning. It because you're teaching your body, you're reminding it that you're not in a stressful, starving state. That's essentially what keto has been for our ancestors for so long. It's a stressful, starving state, but a good stress, unless it's too long. So what is a keto flex day? It's an intentional day with healthy carbs. Here is the protocol for you. I'm gonna give you a seven day protocol if you believe it's time for you to flex, this is for you. Seven days out of the week. It's a 5-1-1 protocol. And I outlined this in my book, but I'm gonna give it to you right now. The five in the 5-1-1 means five days of intermittent fasting, an 18-6 schedule, meaning 18 hours fasted, six hour eating window. In your eating window, you're going to eat keto-friendly foods. You're gonna keep yourself in ketosis during those five days. The first one in the 511 now is a 24 hour water fast where you just go dinner to dinner or lunch to lunch or even breakfast to breakfast with just water, sea salt, maybe coffee and tea, but you're really getting in a 24 hour fast. And the final one in the 511 is your keto flex day. It could be any day of the week, no fasting. You're going to have breakfast, lunch and dinner. And here's the difference you're going to actually intentionally eat over 100 grams of healthy carbs and protein, and you're gonna lower your fat that day. This is your friend coming over with all of the firewood to ramp up the burning of the body fat. It works like a charm. It's a way to mix things up. It reminds the body it's not starving. 
That's the 5-1-1 rule. Give it a shot. It works really well for our Keto Camp Academy students. Final tip or a bonus tip, I should say, for you is this. If you really wanna feel better with whatever diet and be more glucose insulin sensitive, build more muscle, like lean muscle mass. Something I'm working on personally this year, build more muscle. The more muscle you build, the more flexibility you have with your nutrition. It kind of acts like a sponge to absorb glucose. So you have healthier glucose levels, healthier inflammatory levels. So add in some strength training if you're not doing so already, some burst training, some hit training. Just make sure the fundamentals are covered and then you would add the strength training. If you're in the habit of sacrificing sleep to go to the gym, you're doing it wrong, my friend. No, you're skipping the fundamentals. Get quality sleep, master stress, and then add in the strength training. I hope this video was very helpful for you. I have a ton of keto and fasting videos on my channel. Click the video on the screen to keep up with the education. Share this with a friend. Go get subscribed to the Keto Camp Podcast. Hit the thumbs up. Thank you for watching. I've got vitamin G gratitude for you, and I'll see you on the next video.